I always took the attitude when someone walked in the doors, whatever the, their dreams were, they became my dreams too. And I wanted to help people get there. Anytime you can change a life, I believe you change the world of somebody. I was always about winners. I was never about wins. That's how I've always coached. Give me winners. And, you know, I think the stuff on the field will take care of itself. I've had one job in my life. And I've had a calling and I've embraced it. So I've been blessed. My goal is worth, purpose, and value. Well, where does that come from? And most people don't have it. And the only way you can find that is the truth. Hey, fitness and health fans. It's time to get your game on and crush it with Coach Margella in another episode of Sporting Good Fitness. Join us for the podcast that will coach you from the sidelines to keep you on your game no matter what health or fitness game you play. Hey, I'm Coach Margella. I'm Sporting Good Fitness. What are you sporting? Hey, Coach Margella. What do you have for us today? All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of Sporting Good Fitness. I'm Coach Margella, and today I have Judd Granzo. He has quite a history. He's been involved with both baseball and football. He actually played at the University of Tennessee and was on the national championship team back in 98. After doing that, he moved to the Middle Tennessee area, was the original owner at D1 Sports Facility in Franklin, and he also started the MAD program, Making a Difference Sports Training, um, that he's still involved with today. He's also coaching over at Brentwood High School for the freshman team. And most importantly, he opened up a ministry and he's in the area helping troubled teens. He has something called P3, Peace, Power, and Purpose Ministry that he started a few years ago. And uh, I just want to welcome you today, Judd, to the show. And I really appreciate you taking out the time today to join us. Yeah, Frank, I uh, appreciate you uh, having me on. Just uh, So I, I was original owner of D1 Speed and Strength in Hendersonville and then later became a founding partner and, and uh, co-owner of D1 Sports Training that starts down here in Franklin. So just wanted to clarify that a little bit. Okay, thank you for doing that. Let me ask you real quick. I know you got a, you were drafted, I think it was said the fourth round by the Dodgers and you decided to end up going to play football at UT. Can you tell me a little bit about why you ended up deciding to go that route? You know, I got drafted out of high school by the Dodgers and went ahead and I signed and played a uh, couple of seasons. And it was just interesting, kind of, you know, we'll tie into my ministry as we get talking about here. But I just said, you know, I just had a change of heart. And, you know, I'd been an athlete. It seemed like since, you know, I could recognize what a, I could do with a, you know, a ball and a bat or a football or basketball. And that um, kind of what was my identity was wrapped into that. And then after a season or two of playing, I just said, you know what, I had a little shoulder injury and had a scope and I just couldn't get uh, mentally back into wanting to go and, and have a spring training. And so I um, just took some time off and I started going to a junior college. And then I had a football coach call me and said, Hey, you know, I heard you're back in school and why don't you come play football? If you're going to go to college, you might as well get it paid for. And uh, I was a two sport athlete in high school and I might've said, man, you know, I'm done being a sports guy. And just some interesting things happen and some doors opened up and next thing I know I, I transferred to a, another junior college and I was playing a position I've never played before and within the first year and I was out of there and uh, decided I was getting ready to go to UCLA and they had a coaching change and then um, decided to go to the University of Tennessee and so I was there in 98 to 2000. I had suffered a neck injury that uh, really ultimately ended my, my playing career but did win a national championship and an SEC championship and a lot of good memories and um, enjoyed my time there. So, That's awesome. Going back, you know, living here in Nashville, I moved out from New York to here, but people are so passionate down here about college football and especially UT and really, you know, going back about 20 years now, everybody always talks about that national championship team and, and just all the things that it really means to Tennessee in, in general and just in the South for football. Um, hopefully they're going to get back to the point where they're competing at that level again. I hope so too. And yes, what a great tradition here in the South and especially in Tennessee. And it's really been sad to, you know, when Coach Fulmer was uh, let go to kind of see what happened to the program. And there's something to be said for the tradition. There's something to be said for the loyalty and people love their football here. And I was fortunate to play on a, two really great teams and two seasons there. And, you know, you see the fans, how much they love and support the, that university and that football program. And uh, there's no reason why Tennessee shouldn't be a top five program year in and year out. And so um, hopefully we, you know, we will get back there. But, um, man, the competition's tough. You know, SEC, it's a tough, yeah. uh, tough division and tough to, you know, conference. So, but, uh, you know, hey, that's why they get paid the big bucks to do that. Yeah, I tell you, I've gone to a couple games there now. And the traditions they have there and just the feeling you get when you go to a game there is just 
It's unlike a pro game, and it's just you get a lot of pride. I didn't go to school there. I just really feel a lot of pride going to that game and watching them do the vol walk before they come out. It's a really cool experience. And if you've never gone to a college football game, especially a game like a UT game, it's just unbelievable. The scenery and the sounds and the sights and everything there. It's just it's just awesome. So I'm I'm in awe that you got to play there. It's really it's a great stadium. Yeah, our, my first home game that we played there, we played Florida, and, and I'd never been on a vol walk or ran out of the tee. And, you know, walking down that the, the vol walk, you know, there was 40, 50,000 people just swarmed everywhere until we got in the stadium. And at that time in 98, I think we had the largest crowd. It was like 107, 108. You know, they've expanded the stadium. But, you know, I, I can't even describe what it's like to run out of the tee. I, I wouldn't do it justice, so I'm just going to – Leave that it's undescribable and it's a pretty special place to be. It's made me a lot more of a fan now by living here and going to some of those games. So after college then, so you moved to Middle Tennessee, like you were saying, you opened up the D1 speed and strength up in Hendersonville and then ended up being the co-owner at, at the one in Franklin as well. And then right after that, you started doing the MAD program, the Making a Difference in the Sports Training Program? Yeah, I mean... And really, my wife is what talked me into it. I was actually doing some training in Knoxville in between doing classes, and I started just working with baseball players. I'd train them how to hit and pitch and then do all the physical work with them and change their bodies. And I had three guys right off the bat get scholarships. And I thought, man, this is a pretty good thing. So I I tried it, the D1 Speed and Strength as a pure baseball program development. And my first year, I had five, six guys sign scholarship papers. And next thing I know, I had soccer players and Uh, I got to think this is like 2001. The phenomenon of the speed and strength coach privately hadn't quite hit yet. And people thought I was kind of crazy even to do (laughs) it, you know, to train like that. And now it's like, you know, there's a handful just here in our little town of that. And it's just, you know, if you're not training, you know, in the minority, because that's just the way of life now. But it's it's been neat to watch it, just the change of it, the way they approach it. And so, yeah, I did the D1, sold that in 06, my last I used to train a lot of pro athletes. Uh, com- I had the last combine class at nine or ten guys drafted, two in the first round. So I'd love the pressure of getting guys ready for their event. And I always took the, you know, the attitude when someone walked in the doors, whatever the, their dreams were, they became my dreams too. And I wanted to help people get there. And, man, I've had hundreds of kids get scholarships. And uh, it's just been a special thing. And so, yeah, after I sold it, I started another company called Mad Sports Training, making a difference because that's been my – uh, that's my, been my goal to impact people, you know, so we, we've done that here in, in Franklin. I actually had one going in South Bend and it's been a cool journey and I've had a lot of great people just walk in my doors and I've seen a lot of young guys that I took under my wing. Now they own their own little speed and strength training deals. And, um, uh, it's been pretty special, you know, and each time you can change a life, I believe you change the world of somebody and, and that's just how I look at it. And, uh, I've been blessed with uh, just a lot of a lot of neat things for the training, man. I did an ACL prevention video, and next thing you know, I, you know, I did work with some soccer girls. Next thing you know, I was like the soccer guru, and I, you know, <laughs> didn't know anything about soccer. But I had to get their, their, they get their body structurally balanced to be powerful and to jump and run and volleyball, and I've just kind of ran the gamut of it. And I'm just thinking about all the guys and, and young ladies that have come through. I mean, I got to train the line for the Green Bay Packers who won the Super Bowl that year. I mean, I just, man, I can just, I could probably talk for hours about just how special and and even the ones that you know what i mean everyone was special to me you know obviously when you talk about pro athletes and college athletes you know it's that's the glitz and glamour but i just love the hard work and seeing people work hard and you know whether they achieved it or not i was always about winners i was never about wins that's how i've always coached give me winners and you know i think the stuff on the field will take care of itself so i just man i've been i've been blessed man i've a lot of the guys say, man, I'd love to do what you do. You know, you wear sweats or shorts all day with a, with a do-rag and shoot baskets, <laughs> play handball, lift weights. Now, that was my 35 and under days, and I'm 41 now, so my body can't quite do all that. But it's been a great first journey, I guess. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I've been blessed with uh, being able to do it. You know, I've been really – I've never looked like I've ever worked. You know, I, I would say I've never – I've had one job in my life and everything else. I've, I've had a calling, and I've embraced it. So I've been, I've been blessed. Well, I was looking and really with you tying in the stuff with the ministry, with these kids, and, and, you know, that's a big part that I see that's missing in a lot of people's lives. Even, you know, even in Middle Tennessee and some of the the more, you know, wealthier parts, there's still a lot of issues I'm sure that you see. And and, uh, 
tell me how you started, you know, adding that into your coaching and just what it was to train these athletes. Yeah, well, you know, my, my business was always my ministry, and I always tried to speak truth into people's lives. And, and so for about 14, 15 years, I was listening to what all these kids were dealing with and college kids, and it was interesting. I, before I expanded my business in 02, I had two options, and I've been really in some serious prayer about it. One, I wanted to expand my business, and two, I wanted to uh, be involved with, you know, a church and part of a staff. Well, in the same week, I had an opportunity to come down to Franklin and expand the business, and I also had a, I was offered a pastoral position at a church. And I felt, you know, I prayed to God, said, well, you know what? This is my ministry. You know, I'm outside the church walls. And, and I went with the business, I guess you could say. And then uh, several years ago, I was just really convicted to either be, you know, here in Williamson County, what a, what a wonderful place to live, but uh, a lot of pressures. And I just kind of was hearing with the kids, with the men. And, and my ministry is kind of a full service. I, I walk life with men and young men. And, and so... I was just hearing all about the problems and, and going, man, what is going on? And I thought back to my own life of, you know, 19, 20 year old kid. I was drafted. I was playing ball, really rough childhood, broken family. And I remember the sitting in the car and I told my mom, I said, you know, I don't think I'm gonna go back and play baseball. And I didn't grow up with my mom. But as I told people around it, I saw the reaction was like, you know, I was just Judd the athlete. I'm sitting here going, well, aren't you worried about Judd the person? You know, and so my identity, my whole, you know, 20 years was wrapped up in being an athlete. And I think you see a lot of that today. I always say two questions to men. You know, what does it mean to be a man and what's your purpose? And usually they're 0 for 2. And, you know, one thing, Frank, you and I, I mean, nothing can change our DNA. We are going to be men until we right. die. And um, now at least I want to know what that looks like. And so I look at that two ways. I'm, you know, I don't want the world to define me. And I think there's so many things out there that teach us the false masculinity of the world. And, um, and unfortunately, we buy into it. You know, I look at Williamson County. Uh, I think it was last year's stats, teen suicide rate. You know, we have 62, 63 counties in the state of Tennessee. And Williamson County is probably the greatest place to live, one of the most wealthiest counties in the, in, you know, in the United States. And we were second in teen suicide rate. Shelby wow. County in Memphis was one, and Williamson County was two. And so when you look at that, to me, there is a, a world of hurt there is expectations, there's pressures. And at the end of the day, you know, I always say we have an identity crisis. We don't know we are. And it was an emptiness. And the same thing with me, it was was an an empty feeling of, is this really what I've been called to do? And, you know, most people will struggle at some point in their life. And I've noticed this a lot, the millennials, you know, 30 and under is kind of a lot of what I work with. Uh, But I'm actually walking, I walk with pastors and CEOs and all that. But my goal is, you know, worth, purpose and value. Well, where does that come from? And most people don't have it. And the only way you can, you know, find that is the truth. You know, and for me, the truth is Jesus. And if you study it, you study him as a man uh, and you study him as God. But if you study him as a man and you really looked at the walk of Jesus 2000 years ago, every man would want to be like him. I and mean, he was bold. He was a renegade, you know, but he, you know, he wasn't a surface person. He went right to the heart. He went right to the root. And that's kind of what I do. I'm, I'm outside a church wall. I do have a ministry. And what I try to do is help people have a vision. And let them, let them understand what, what is their life vision statement and where does purpose, worth, and value come from. And so I, you know, I know you said trouble kids. I work with all types of people and I think we're all in trouble. You know, if we don't know Jesus, we're all in trouble as far as I'm concerned. But so my point is to them is if you ask most men, if they have one good friend, most men will tell you 40 and up my age will tell you, no, they don't. And isolation is the worst thing for a person, especially a man and a young man. Um, when you have no one to turn to or talk to, we just internalize this, and it's just we just have a, a heavy burden. And God says, "Listen, you know, we're not called to to sit by and watch these people hurt. We're called to help carry those burdens." And so, I started a ministry, um, an outreach ministry of just basically, you know, another cool thing I do is I walk life with people. I'm an outside person to help speak truth in their life, to help them get going on the right path, help them overcome addiction, and I focus a lot on pornography addiction. I think it's the number one hidden health hazard in America now the world. It's a criminal act as far as I'm concerned. It's destroying men. It's destroying women. And now it's it's stealing our young kids' souls. And so I'm on an anti-pornography team. We passed the resolution here a year ago in Tennessee saying that pornography was a public health hazard. We just passed one in Florida uh, about a month ago. So um, it's a real factor. I mean, it's sad. I hear so many heartbreaking stories. There's an emptiness. And unfortunately, pornography's filling a lot of it. It's a free addiction, by the way. It's a free addiction. Um, so I talk a lot about that. I make that uncomfortable conversation 
a little bit easier. You know, I'm, I'm about protecting the kids, but the only way you can protect the kids is you get it out of the adults' hands too. Because when you start seeing these crimes that are being committed, usually there's pornography related and it's being taken out on the kids. It's very, very sad. And unfortunately, we don't talk about it enough and we should. And so I yeah. do that. I've, you know, I got a radio show on Sunday night and that's what I focus on. I focus on Jesus and pornography. <laughs> and I bring guests in and uh, we talk about that. And I expose the harms of what, uh, you know, porn is doing in this world, in this culture. It's nasty. It's, it's evil, actually. It's pure evil. I've seen so much now just human trafficking and things that are going on in, in this area. So I know that this is happening right in our backyard. And I know Williamson County and Davidson County and, and Nashville is a, you know, is a big hub for that now. And it's scary that, that that's going on. People ask, how do we stop the human sex trafficking? You stop it by stopping porn. It's a direct yeah. correlation. You stop pornography, you'll stop that in a that's heartbeat. Right. And, um, you know, at some point, people want to put skin to the game. And one of the biggest days of trafficking, really, to be honest with you, is the Super Bowl. Yep. And you know I've, what? I've heard that. Where, yeah, where is the campaign of them coming out with all the stuff that goes on with domestic violence, which pornography leads to that? Where was Cadell, you know, out there speaking boldly and saying, hey, we've got a serious problem going on here, and this is the root of it. What are we going to do? But when we start saying problem, we start saying the word evil, we're, we're talking about a standard, we're talking about a moral obligation. Well, you, there's only one thing that you got to go back. Subjective morality is what the world we're living in now, and that's why you see uh, where we're going. So um, it's a dangerous slope uh, we're walking down by, and you know that's my cause, man. That's my campaign for people to know Jesus and get rid of this pornography. Well, I just met you recently, but as soon as... I started learning more about what you do. I'm like, I got to have this guy on the podcast because I really admire what you do and, and the time you put in to help these kids and, and to coach and, and really be a mentor and guide these kids in the right direction. And I admire your purpose. I admire your, your passion for what you're doing. I wanted to ask you before we wrap this up, how can people get involved either with your ministry or, or the mad sports training that you do? And can you tell our listeners a little bit of how to, if they want to get involved and how they can contact you and everything? Yeah, absolutely. If you go to P, the numeral three, so P3 Judd, J U D D dot com, um, that will take you right to the P3 ministry website. You can hear my show, you can podcast my show from there. Uh, but there's also a thing where it says email Judd. And if you hit that, guess what? You'll email me. But yeah, P3 Judd dot com. And I think my phone number is actually on there. You can always call or email me, but um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty quick on a response, but um, yeah, that's the best thing. And, you know, we all can be a part of the fight and the change. It's just a matter of, are we willing to do it? And, uh, you know, when I started to understand that everybody's life is sacred and everybody's life is important and everybody's life has a calling and, you know, our purpose is really should to live is to live for other people. I've gotten so much enjoyment and fulfillment out of my life for living for other people. It's amazing. You wouldn't think that, but it's great. You know, and you know, when you, when you can strip being so selfish and we, I mean, that's what the world preaches right now. I mean, you look what these kids go, go through is, you know, it's selfie this, it's all about me. And this is, this is that generation. It's like, wow, they're on an uphill battle. They don't even know. So that's what we try to talk about is, you know, let's fulfill our purpose and our calling. That's the great thing about free will is we all have to make that decision. You know, we have the choice to do that. God loved us so much. The, one of the greatest thing he gave us besides being able to love somebody is free will. And that's, um, that's pretty cool. Well, again, I thank you for taking your time out today to, to speak to us and give a little taste of kind of what you do on a daily basis. And uh, I really appreciate that. And I look forward to getting to know you more. And uh, thank you again for coming on today and being on the show. Yeah, man. Hey, real quick, 99.7 Super Talk WTN. That is Sunday nights, 8 to 9 for your local listeners here in the Middle Tennessee area. So that's the P3 Man Up Hour. But you can also go to the website, p3judd.com. So, hey, Frank, thanks for having me on your uh, podcast. And uh, God bless bless you and your work you're doing. Thank you, too. And God bless you, too. And, and thanks again for being on today. You got it, man. So what a powerful guest he was today. I really appreciated him coming on. And, you know, it really brings up what I've tried to do personally in my life. Being a doctor, we deal with a lot of physical ailments as a chiropractor and I have a lot of athletes come in here as well. And we're always dealing with, obviously, the physical ailments. But really, as I've gotten older and I've realized that there's a huge mental and, and spiritual component. And, you know, Judd really taps into that really well on both ends of it, both the physical and the mental and spiritual side of it. And that's the kind of person that 
I really admire. And that's that's where I'm looking to take my practice is really help people more with that. And after listening to him today, it really inspires me to be, you know, really a better person, better father, better doctor, better friend, and a better coach to to all the people in my life because it's really ties in everything uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. And to truly be healthy, you have to have all those components. And also to be a great athlete, you really have to have those components too. If you go and look and see some of the best athletes, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and, and some of these other guys that you see, they're all mentally there. They're, they're, they're really tied into what they do, and, and they have a system that they, that they truly believe in, and, and it's a big part of why they're so successful and why year after year they're on the top of their game. And that's what being an athlete really is about, is, is combining all those factors together. And, you know, after talking with Judge, that's really what, what I admire about him um, being on the cutting edge of that for so many years now and just you know me being able to finally get more involved with that over the last few years I really enjoy listening to that so you know I want to leave you guys with something that I really feel is important and that's just starting your day off right you know the, the time of the day that I do those kind of things is right when I wake up in the morning having that morning routine where you you know maybe you read the bible or you listen to some empowering information maybe you know you watch something on youtube or you read something that really gets your day going that's the best time of day to do those kind of things because that's when your brain is ready to handle those kind of things where you can really start the day off well and you'll be more successful in your day you'll be more successful in your life in your sports that you play in in school and work because if you start your day off right like that you're going to be much more successful so um, that's a big part of how i've started my day now and really know that that's where it's headed for the rest of the day is that I, I know that I can start the day off successful. So really, no matter what religion you are, what's important is that you are spiritual, you are mentally strong, because that's a huge factor in, in you being successful in life. Um, and whether you're an athlete or not, you know, that's a big part of it. So you just have to know what your weaknesses are and really learn how, how to help, you know, improve those. And, and that's what all the winners do, that's what all the best athletes do, that's what all the best business people do, is that they go find their weaknesses and they work on them until they make them their strengths. And that's the most important thing, and that's what I'd really like you to take away from today is really, you know, working towards that goal. So if you're not sure where to start, you know, contact Judd. He's a great guy. This is what he does. You know, listen to his radio show. He's on every Sunday night on 99.7 Super Talk in, in the middle of Tennessee area. Um, you can email him, like he said, and, and just follow some of the things that he does. So if you're just looking for somebody uh, to follow, he's a great guy. And if not, you know, just start researching for these things and you'll find things that inspire you and you'll find things that, that, that mean something both spiritually and mentally to you. And it'll really improve your life. It'll really make a difference for you to be more successful and, and you know, just happier with what you do in your life. So thank you again for listening today. We really appreciate you each week tuning into our show. I hope you enjoyed Judd today. Uh, Also, everything about Judd and how to get in touch with him will be up on our episode page. So again, this has been another great episode of Sporting Good Fitness. I'm Coach Margella. I'm Sporting Good Fitness. How about you? Thank you, Coach Margella, for another thrilling episode. Sporting Good Fitness is a broadcast wellness production powered by Ideal Health and Wellness Center in Franklin. Executive producer, Frank Sardella. Dr. Margella appears courtesy of Ideal Health and Wellness Center, copyright 2018, all rights reserved. For more information, visit sportinggoodfitness.com.